This video is brought to you by Adorama. Was I daydreaming there? <laughs> Jordy here for Cinecam.net and welcome again to Copycat Friday! Woo! Cat, double kick slap! Oh! <laughs> So, like I was saying, my name is Jordy for Cinecam.net and you're watching Copycat Friday, a weekly series where we recreate an effect from a popular film or music video. And this week, the music video is sad from XXX Tentacion was trending out of the roof. Honestly, I don't follow the artist, but I did take a good look at his music video and there are two times where we would see this transition where we zoom through his eye into another scene. So, Jordy is trying to attempt a laser flip, you know, the trick he fell downward and broke his wrist. Ah, Look at him now. How cute. But I got protection now. Maybe How also the other wrist. How cute. He's like a little skater boy. All right, one try. If it fails, it fails. That's it. In the original video clip, you can see the rapper sitting in a dark room on a chair. Now he is lit by one single light and that is some sort of a soft box like you can see over here or a very large soft frame. But important is that you're going to cut off the light. Now we are using a grit for that and that way the light won't spill on the walls, etc. Uh, now this right here is a dome from Aperture. Uh, this is the 120D, so it comes with a ton of accessories like this dome, for example, which you can take off, etc. This here is the actual light. Now this is the first generation softbox, I think, and it didn't came with a grit, so I found this one on eBay. I'll also leave a link to it in the description below. Now currently, they do have a second generation of these softboxes, which I'll also leave a link to in the description below, and they do come with one of these grits. Now we want to have the light coming more from above, so not so much from the side, which is why I have hang it on the C stand right here, which allows me to extend the light a little bit further and that way the stand itself won't be in the frame. It's important that you have the light somewhere above of the subject so that we don't have uh, too much shadow on the floor and that he's also lit here on the top and that we don't have too much uh, bright areas on his face. Now to have more depth in your shot, it's important that your lighting is coming from the other side of your subject, so actually on the back. And that is why that I'm actually turning this soft box right here, not really above him, Definitely not on that side where it's sitting more in front of the camera, but I'm going to turn it behind him like this. I want to take a brief moment, guys, to thank our partner Adorama, which is an online store for basically any video equipment. They are a large and well-established company, which is why that they can offer personal support when you're buying a new camera or anything else. Adorama also runs multiple promotions across the entire year. To check out what they all have in store, make sure to click the first link in the description below, or you can also check out our kits of the gear that we use in the studio. So that was the first shot, or actually the second shot. Let's now take the first shot, which is outside, and I'm going to take off the sweater because it's 30 degrees outside Celsius, and that means it's pretty darn hot. So for this shot, I'm wearing the palm shirt. Yep. In your first shot that we're taking second, it's not really important that you shoot this from a slider. You can also just shoot this from a tripod, but it is giving more dynamic to your shot. Trying to keep the camera away. So, uh, you can use one. So since the sun is shining in my face, we're going to add one of these light cutters, which also goes on to a C-stand. We're going to go inside because I have trouble to keep my eyes open. There's too much light here. Laser flip, take three. Oh, damn it. Ah. So we've got our two shots. Let's bring them into Premiere Pro. The transition itself might seem easy, but it's actually not. And that is due to many glitches and bugs within Premiere. But after many trials and errors, we did find an easy way to make it work. Let's start off by placing your clip into a timeline. And since my head and the camera is moving a little bit, we're going to cut the last part of the clip and add a frame hold to it. 
this is going to make it easier for us to zoom into the eye and not have to motion track the mask. So with that clip selected, head over to the opacity from which you can click on the ellipse mask preset, change its size and position to cover the pupil of your eye. When you're done, make sure to invert the mask. Next, you want to duplicate the clip that you've just applied the mask onto the layer above. From this duplication, we're going to remove the mask, trim it and add a cross dissolve on the ends. And this will let the hole in your eye fade in. Then select everything, right click and choose nest. Now let's create that rotation. You want to apply the transform effect to this nested sequence. Head to the point where your frame hold starts. Here you want to place the anchor point of the transform effect in your eye. And this is important because the anchor point is the point where the effect will rotate around and zoom into. You want to have both of these crosshairs on the exact same point. However, moving one will push the other as well. So it's a little trouble here, but you can do it. I believe in you. Once that sits in place, we can animate the scale to 3 or 400%. It depends on the resolution of your eclipse. If you go too far, Premiere will crash. Then also animate the rotation and let it make one complete turn. For a smoother transition, you can ease out the both of the starting keyframes and when you expand the scale and rotation properties, you can pull on the levers to make sure that the animation starts very smooth and speeds up slowly. Finally, disable composition shutter angle and set one of your own to get some nice motion blur in there. Now we're going to nest this nested sequence again. We have to do this to avoid another glitch in Premiere. Luckily, this is the last time, however. On this new nested sequence, we're again going to move the anchor point on the eye. This time, it can be the anchor point of the normal motion property. Now, I ran into an issue where the clip seemed to zoom in below the anchor point, and that's why I'm placing it a little bit above my pupil. And I would just simply animate the scale and increase it so that it goes through your eye. Like before, I'm choosing Ease Out on the first keyframe and pull on the lever to let it start smoothly. So that's the first part of the transition, which was the most complex. The second clip goes below your first, as you want them to overlap a little bit. Just like with the first clip, we're adding a transform effect to it. If you like, you can change the anchor point again, but it's not necessary. Animate the rotation and let it turn 360 degree. Then also animate the scale. This time I'm going from something like 50 to a little bit over 100. Make sure to smoothen out the keyframes too. Again, to avoid problems, right click and nest the clip. What you want to do now is reposition and scale the clip to make it fit in your eye. Now you might also need to nudge the clip to synchronize the rotation with your first clip. If it would go too fast or too slow, then go back into the rotation animation and move the keyframes closer or further apart. With a little trial and error, you should get the clip in the right spot. And since I scaled down my second clip to make it fit within the eye, I'm going to animate the scale of that property as well back to 100% as it reveals itself. I've gone many times back and forward between the different keyframes and their animation curve to make sure that everything fits nice together. Now, there's one final thing I'd like to show you guys and that is the stop motion effect we also see in a music video. Pretty cool is that the zoom in animation goes fluent, but the movement of the actor not. And this is super simple. Double clicking on the second clip to open up the nested sequence, we're going to add the posterize time effect to it. And this allows us to set the frame rate of that clip to 12, which creates that stop motion feeling. Now important is that you move this effect above the transform, else you will also add the lower frame rates to the transform animation, and that is obviously not what we want. Coming back out of the eye works obviously exactly the same, but then the other way around. Now I'm gonna try and do that laser flip one more time. Lorenzo, get the camera! Yes! Woo! Yes! 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 That was like the 100th try. Lorenzo, you do the outro. First, give a big thumbs up for Georgie's laser flip. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Adorama, for sponsoring this video. And as always, stay creative. Now get back to work, you guys.